Join in singing our opening hymn, Come Now, Almighty King. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you show the way to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the source of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the sign of the Father's love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, 
Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity before its majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in the cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. 
exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory. Praiseworthy and glorious above all from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this weekend is my fifth anniversary as a priest. Uh, yesterday, on June 6th, five years ago, I was ordained a priest up in Indianapolis uh, by Archbishop Tobin. And uh, it has been incredible every day since. Like, I, I cannot express to you how much I love what I get to do. Every day, I get to celebrate the Eucharist. Every day, I get to be a priest and, and help people and minister and it's I, so I worked at Providence High School for three years um, as, my, as my first assignment and the high schoolers would ask me often father what's your favorite thing about being a priest right I, I get that question and uh, I always would tell them I get to make Jesus and obliterate sins it's like having superpowers you know it's, it, it's great I love it uh, and it's it's such a great joy to, to get to do these things. Uh, but I, I was just reminded before Mass uh, of a story that I'm, I'm going to tell the story again, so don't, don't, don't spoil it for everybody. Uh, that, so 
when I was at the parish, right, I, I would occasionally, um, my, my brother came down to visit me one time, and, and uh, we were walking through the, the playground with all the little kids, and as we were walking through, they, they saw me, like, oh, father, how to father, how you doing? And, you know, they run up, give me high fives and stuff, and, and so I, I wear funny fun socks all the time. Uh, these ones have the, the X-Man Colossus on it, right? So, so all the kids were like, oh, what socks you got, what socks? So I, you know, I had to show them my socks and everything. But when we were walking through with my brother, he had brought his dog down with him, a, a German short hair pointer, right? So beautiful dog, you know, floppy ears, short hair. They, they, all the kids saw me and were like ready to give me a high five. As soon as they saw the dog though, I didn't exist. And I was like, dog! Oh, yeah, they're, they're all petting it. So as, as cool as I think I am sometimes, dogs are better. <laughs> uh, but, and, and, and that's more to my point, this weekend isn't about my anniversary. It's, it's, it's a great thing, five years is, is, is awesome. But what we're here to celebrate right now is not Father Adam getting to do some awesome stuff. It's the Blessed Trinity. We're here to celebrate and glorify the Trinity, to, to raise our voices and to celebrate, to come together, honoring the Trinity. So what is the Trinity? What, what is the, the Holy Trinity, right? It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? But how does that work? How, how, can, how can three people be one God? Okay, so are they like different aspects of God? No. No, the theologians have told us that's not the, that's not the way it is. It's not, it's not that they're, they're the different faces of God. There are three individual people in one God. I, I don't know how many engineers we have today, but that doesn't work, right? Like the math doesn't add up, right? And yet... That is why Jesus Christ came into this world, to reveal that mystery to us. He came here, and he died on the cross, and he rose from the dead to show us the second person of the Trinity. To show us who God was in his fullness. See, because we can understand a God who created everything, right? So a being so powerful and above everything that he created from nothing. The world, the universe, placed the stars in the heavens. We can, we can get behind that. And we can get behind the idea of, of the Holy Spirit, which animates all things, gives all things life. It's the breath that, that fills the world. We can get behind that, but... But a human being who's God? I mean, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of human beings, and I don't see God in, in, in there's there's times when I'm like, ah, that's you're definitely not God. But but not only a human being who's God, but a God who became a human being. Why in the world would the creator of all things be willing to condescend so low, to go down so low as to become a part of creation, a human being, and then to die on a cross. Why? And explain this one to me. The math just doesn't add up, does it? And yet, my brothers and sisters, The algebra works out really well. Because God did all of that. God revealed who he was in his fullness in the, in the Trinity. That, that great community, that perfect union of a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That perfect, that perfect family of love. It makes sense and it works out if you remind yourself. He did it all. He did every bit of the cross. He did it all for you. You 
individually, you, are the reason Christ hung on the cross. Christ rose from the dead. You are, he wanted to show himself to you, specifically to you. So he came and he revealed who he was. God showed us who he was in his fullness in the Blessed Trinity. So, I was, I spent last Christmas in Egypt on the, uh, the south side, the, the south, southern tip of the Sinai Peninsula. So if you can, if you have a, a map in your head, right, and you, you look at Africa, and you, you have that between Africa and the Middle East, that little peninsula that comes down, I was at the very bottom tip of that, right there on the Red Sea. And uh, I was there to celebrate Mass for the soldiers and the, the coalition forces that are there in Egypt. Uh, it's, a, it's a long standing mission. It's been there since like the 60s, right? So it's a pretty well built up base. Basically, their job is to make sure Egypt and Israel play nice. That's, that's their whole point. And I was there uh, celebrating Mass and everything. And other than Mass, I really didn't have much to do. So one morning, I, I went out and uh, there was a, a, a nice place to sit to, to go and, and look at the Red Sea, right? And this beautiful view it was, a, it was kind of a, a day very similar to this with sun shining, a nice breeze. And, and I was sitting there, uh, I, 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 I was sitting there at the bar. And uh, uh, it was the morning, so I was just drinking coffee. And when I was sitting there, and a gentleman came over, was, we were the only two at the bar. And so he came over and sat down next to me, and we started talking. Um, and, uh, you know, after the, the pleasantries on you, you know, what's your name, what are you doing here, uh, you know, I, I kind of told him who I was, uh, I'm a chaplain, and things like that. He's like, oh, you're a chaplain. And as soon as they say that, you, you know what's coming next, right? They're, they're going to start asking me all the religious questions, right? And, and that's exactly what happened. We started talking about religion and faith, right? And, and being in the Army and being in the Middle East, that's like the number one rule. Don't talk about religion. Because it could literally get you killed. Uh -huh. But we had a great conversation. Turns out the guy was Muslim. And so we started talking about God and, 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 how, and how they see God, how we see God in different aspects, right? And it, was a good, it was a good conversation. I really enjoyed it. And yet, about halfway through, he looks at me and he goes, You Christians. You Christians, you, you scare me. We scare you. <laughs> he said, yeah, because that whole Trinity thing that you guys believe, that doesn't make sense. The Trinity, it, you know, it, the Trinity is a core aspect of our beliefs, and he's like, it doesn't make sense. I'm like, okay, but why does that scare you? And he said, if Christianity was invented by human beings, a core aspect of your belief, it would make sense. The math would add up. It would be logical. But the Trinity, that's, that's something else. That's, that's, that's a greater mystery that you guys believe it, and you can kind of get there to it, but it just doesn't make sense. My brothers and sisters, we're never going to understand the Trinity. We're never going to be fully able to, to wrap our heads around and grasp the Holy Trinity. That's okay. We don't have to. We just have to believe it. We, we're never going to fully understand just about anything, particularly God. Right? We're never going to understand fully God. So, believe. Just accept, accept that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are God. Because if we accept that, if we can embrace the idea that the Trinity exists and that God is the Trinity, 
and that Christ is God, the other core aspect of our belief comes into a whole new perspective. The Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, not only did God condescend, come down so low as to become a human being, but he comes down even further and becomes bread for us to eat. He goes down even farther and becomes our food. Food for you and me. He feeds us with his body. Jesus Christ is God and the Eucharist is Jesus Christ. Therefore, the Eucharist is God. And we get to eat that. Let that sink in for a second. We are about to eat God. He's about to come inside of us and be present to us in a, at a cellular level. How does that not change us? How does the Eucharist not completely alter who we are? So, oftentimes, when we're out and about, right, we, 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 you know, sitting at a restaurant, we won't do our meal prayer, right? Because people will look at us. Or, you know, when we're in school or something, and we're nervous about something, we, we won't say our, we won't, we won't, like, pray and ask for help, because... The kids around us will, will say something, right? Or, my brothers and sisters, we need to get over that stuff. We need to be boldly Christian in this world. Because it's the most dangerous religion in the world. To be a Christian is the most dangerous faith you can have. Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world. There's no other faith that is as persecuted as Christianity. Just go to China and ask them about it. Or Russia. Or any other communist country. Or the Middle East. There is no other faith that has more martyrs than Christianity. My brothers and sisters, We scare people. Christians scare people because we call we call the world to a different way of life. We call the world to live differently, and that's scary to them because they don't want to change. The world doesn't want to be different. And yet, we're here. And we're called to show them a difference. Instead of taking advantage of everyone around you, love your neighbor. Instead of making everything about you, focus on God. My brothers and sisters, we have to turn to God. Specifically, the Eucharistic Jesus Christ. Christ is present here among us in the Eucharist. Physically. Right here. How does that not change us? How does his presence not only here with us, but inside of us through the Eucharist not change us? Here's why. Here's how. God loves you so much that he gives you free will. That he gives you the ability to reject him. To choose to do something else. To, to walk away and back away from that dangerous way of life that we're all called to. My brothers and sisters, God cherishes you so much that not only does he become bread for you to eat, but he gives you the freedom 
to reject it. I guess my question is, why would you? Please stand with me now as we express our faith in God in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and the Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, God from God, life from life. True God from true God, we ought not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was encountered the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And his seat at the right hand of the Father. He would come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who receives from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism from givers of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to our loving Father, let us now offer him our prayers and our petitions. For vocations to all the ministries of the church, priesthood, religious life, lay, and diaconal ministries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocation to the ministry of public life, civic leadership, education, health, community service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the strength to mend our ways and to live in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have recently died, especially Paul Stiles and Timothy Titchener, grandson of Marlene Titchener, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Tony Rio, is being especially remembered at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For my uh, brother priest, Father Andy Seiberg, and Father Mike Kucher, who I was ordained with, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions that we hold in the depths of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become, our, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is, the pra for this is praised by the angels and archangels, cherubim too, and the seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. created have rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to, set, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Charles our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all free. Oh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be Our communion hymn is Now We Remain.
I didn't do it, I swear. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul. As we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As Father said, this was his fifth ordination anniversary. And on his card, his ordination card, he had a little poem, and I'd like to share that with you. And Some of you may have heard this before, but it's worth saying again. Thou art a priest forever. To live in the midst of the world without wishing its pleasures. To be a member of each family, yet belonging to none to share all sufferings, to penetrate all secrets, to heal all wounds, to go from men to God and offer him their prayers, to return from God to men, to bring pardon and hope, to have a heart of fire for charity and a heart of bronze for chastity, to teach and to pardon, console and bless always, my God, what a life. And it is yours, O priest of Jesus Christ. Father Adam Ahern, June 6, 2020. And yes, he didn't write this, as he mentioned. But Father, we thank you for everything that you do. Just remember, as cool as I am, dogs are better. Our hymn ascending forth is Holy God, we praise thy name. (laughs) 